I've been building WordPress sites for over 15 years. And all along that time, there's still the same 13 things I always come back to when I start a new project. In this video, I'm gonna walk through those 13 things, give you a quick tour of the WordPress admin, and just make you feel a little more comfortable as you start to build out your WordPress site. Now, if you got your WordPress site from a hosting company with a pre-installed WordPress version, you're probably ending up with a site pretty much like what you see on my screen here. This is the WordPress default 2023 theme. It's what they call a block theme. I'll show you a little bit about what that means, but it is a basic WordPress install. I do use a local site, but if you're using a different hosting company, if you're on Pressable or somewhere else, uh, your site will look pretty much like this unless you've kind of asked for something pre-configured. So I'm gonna log into the WordPress admin and then I'm gonna uh, walk through the, those 13 things I promised. So I'm gonna log in here to my admin and then I'll start showing you uh, all around the admin area. So uh, this first screen you'll see here is just kind of a dashboard. You can ignore, you can dismiss things. Sometimes your plugins will add useful things here. But the first things I wanna show you on my checklist are in settings general. So if you navigate there, you're gonna see a lot of site settings. I'm gonna highlight the ones that are most important for you to confirm in every new WordPress site setup. So site title, it's kind of used in SEO uh, as a fallback title for a lot of things. It'll be used if you're using an SEO plugin uh, for places where they mention your site name. So you wanna make sure this accurately describes your business. I always do my Must Love Dogs demo site, so I'll pretend that's what I have here. Must Love Dogs membership. Uh, tagline is optional. It could be shown on the front end of your site. It could be hidden, so you don't have to fill that out. Uh, I would confirm that your WordPress address or, or URL matches what you expect it to be. If it doesn't, uh, use this setting with caution and contact your host if it appears incorrect. The next thing you wanna look at is that administration email address, the email address that will receive all the notifications from your site when someone resets their password, if you're doing that, if a new comment was posted to your blog. Uh, lots of different plugins will use this feature as well as core WordPress to alert you of things that are out of date, things that are getting updated, any conflicts that they're aware of that you need to be notified of, or even if your site goes offline due to some kind of security issue or something like that. So make sure this is an email address that you can receive email at. If there's multiple people managing the site who need to do this, you can only put one email address in this field. So you would have to set up like an auto rule within your email program to forward that to that group or create some kind of group email address that's shared and automatically sent to different people in your organization. This field membership, it's, if anyone doesn't know me, I'm a Paid Memberships Pro co-founder, so this isn't really membership. This is about whether people can register to your WordPress site as just a user. So they label it membership. We can talk about membership features and I have a lot of videos about them, but this field is really important. I leave it unchecked, especially for sites that are using a membership plugin like Paid Memberships Pro. It may seem counterintuitive, but what this basically does is restricts anyone from using the core WordPress default user registration to sign up and create a user account. Highly recommend keeping this unchecked so that no one can just become a basic WordPress site user. You don't really want people going through other registration channels when you're running a full-fledged membership site. The last thing I wanna show you on this screen is this new user default role setting. Super important. Most WordPress sites, when they get pre-installed, will leave this set as subscriber. That is exactly what you want. You do not want any higher permission as the default role for your WordPress site 99.9% .9 of the time. If you do need to manage user roles for other privileges in the site, we have some tools at Paid Memberships Pro to do this. There are other WordPress plugins that do it, but really the subscriber role is what you want all of your members, all of your users to have that don't have access to post blogs, edit admin settings and all kinds of things. So if this is anything other than subscriber, talk to someone and understand why that's the case and whether that's needed. But most often I would change it back to subscriber and be done with that. So that's everything on this general settings tab. The next thing I wanna show you is under the reading tab. Uh, and you can um, adjust a couple of things here that are super important. So this first one is what your homepage displays, your latest posts or a static page. So for most sites, we have like a blog section where all of our articles go. That's your static posts page. Your homepage should be a static page. You can lay it out with all kinds of patterns and fun things and then have that posts page live somewhere like blog slash blog slash resources, somewhere like that. So that's an important setting to check out. That just controls if they go to your main WordPress site domain, what is shown on the front. So some people do want their blog shown there. That's fine. 
that's your choice. Uh, other people will want something a little bit more enhanced and more like landing page like. Um, the other thing I like to adjust here is just verify that this search engine visibility is unchecked. Unless you have a reason to block your entire site from, from search index, like if it's a staging site, development site, or if it's a completely hidden and private site. But 99.9% .9 of the time, everybody's going to want this unchecked and they want their site to show up in search results. So that's some cool settings on this reading tab. I want to show you one other thing in the admin I like to do. Take a look at your permalinks. So permalinks are how the URLs are structured for the WordPress site. So that's if you have pages on your site, you'll see your domain forward slash and then the something that identifies that sub page of your site. You can set different permalink structures for different types of content in the site. So if it's blog posts, you can prefix it with the year of the content. You could have a totally clean uh, post name that's just using the slug of that post. And you can create your own structure here using that. Uh, what I like to do is post name for all of my sites and just leave it and set it as that. I don't customize this too much. Uh, and if you do already have a site that's indexed in search, you don't really want to play around with the permalinks after the fact, unless you're working with someone who can help you make sure that existing URLs redirect to their new permalink location. The next thing I want to show you are some design related things that I do in every WordPress site. So I'm going to show you a little bit about 2023, this block theme. And then I'll show you a classic theme and how you set those same settings up. So we're going to walk through how to set up a site logo and a primary menu. And then later we'll get to a classic theme. We'll look at widgets, but they don't really exist in this theme. So this is a block theme. If I wanted to add my logo to this site, I would go to edit site. And there are patterns for uh, your header and footer of your site. This one we want to edit is the header. So here's where you could edit your, oop, go away. So here's where you could add that uh, logo to your site. You could add before, and then there's a block in WordPress now called the site logo. And once you upload this in one place, you're telling that block wherever I place you throughout my site, use the same logo. So it's an attempt to make things easier for you that you're not editing your logo if you happen to change the color scheme, that you're not editing it in 10 different places. That's kind of stored as a setting. So you would insert that block and you can add your logo here. As far as your menus in this theme, uh, if I click here, you'll see this is a navigation block. I can add menu items here. Uh, and that's really setting like the structure of that primary menu for a theme like this, for a block theme. I'm going to switch over to a different theme, which is a classic theme. Let me navigate back to my admin of my WordPress site. And then I'll go to appearance themes. So if you click here to add new, that brings up the WordPress theme repository, all of the free and open source themes you can pick from. The theme that I am author of that I like to use for all my sites is called MemberLite. So I can install that here. And then you'll see when we're on the front end of our site, we no longer have that edit site option. Instead, we have something called customize. So if I click customize in classic theme, I can still do those two things we just did. I can add a logo under the site identity section right here, select logo. And then I can also customize menus and set a primary menu for my site. So just like the other one, I can set it to the primary location and I can add items like my home page and my sample page. So that's two ways to do logos and primary menus. I wanted to show you one more thing in classic themes, which was setting up widgets. So this doesn't really apply within uh, the block themes that we looked at, but in uh, classic themes like this, they have an area that you would think of as like a sidebar. Um, with these widgets. So when WordPress pre-installs, these are the widgets it puts in, in that sidebar. The archives, which is just, you know, month-based, every year of every post you've ever written is linked here. And then your categories. You could change this however you want. You can insert other blocks. You can add an image here. If you don't like this, you can remove the default widgets. But just take a look at what's already placed in the widget areas defined by your theme so that nothing weird is showing there that you do not want to show up. So I'm not gonna save any of my changes. So those are the design areas. We looked at block themes and setting a logo and a menu, and then we looked at classic themes quick. The last thing in this demo, I know it's rapid fire, but hopefully you can bookmark it and just use this punch list. We'll put it in the description of all the things you wanna check every time you start a new WordPress site. So the last thing I wanna do is show you a few WordPress plugins I always like to use for any site, especially a membership site. One is called Yoast. You probably have heard of this. It's the largest, the first, the biggest SEO plugin. 
It gives you tools to help you custom craft meta titles and meta descriptions, and it handholds you along the way. So it helps you create better technical SEO and better search results and placement for your blog content. So Yoast SEO is a great one to install. I also like to install a Google Analytics plug, and I'll show you which one I use. It's called GA Google Analytics, and it's by a person named Jeff Starr. So we just have to locate it. Here it is. It has this circle logo. So I always like to install that plugin. Uh, there's settings you have to set it up and connect it to your Google account, but it's very straightforward to do. And the last one, um, because I don't often go with like a robust WordPress host, we kind of do a lot of self-hosted sites. I do like to install a caching plugin. The one I like is called W3 Total Cache. And you'll see it right here, W3 Total Cache. So those are the three plugins I always install, Yoast, GA Google Analytics by Jeff Star and W3 Total Cache. Your host might have its own caching tools that they want you to use, and that's fine. Just if you're doing a membership site, recognize that caching is very weird for a membership site. You have visitors to your site who aren't logged in, you have users who are logged in, and then they have various levels of membership access. So it's important that you don't cache the page for those logged in users because what they can view is different based on their membership level. So talk to your host about that. And if you're using PM Pro, we do have some hosting uh, recommendations and uh, caching recommendations I can link to in the description. So that's my list. That's the 13 things I do on every WordPress site. Some are in the admin and, and looking at that settings, the general page where we looked at our site title, our admin email address, the default role on our site, and how we allow people to register. We also looked at permalinks and the structure of the URLs on our site. Important to do that from day one and put the structure in place that you like. Otherwise, you're gonna be dealing with redirecting URLs later and that's a nightmare. Uh, we looked at quick how to install a new theme and then with that theme, how to set up a menu and how to set your site logo. We looked at classic themes and the widgets you can place in sidebars. And finally, we installed three go-to plugins I always like to use. Yoast for SEO, the W3 Total Cache for page caching, and GA Google Analytics for having analytics in my membership site. I'm Kim Coleman. Give this channel a like, subscribe, do all the things you're supposed to do. Uh, I've been building WordPress sites for 15 years, like I said, and this list really hasn't changed in all that time. Things look a little different, but they're all pretty much the same basic steps that you just put in place at the groundwork of starting any online business with WordPress.